Hi, so this is uh, the fifth uh, lesson with the Paolo method and we're coming to the end of the 21 days and uh, we are coming towards how to integrate things into life first of all into standing a little bit maybe into dancing and um, yeah thinking more about well verticality when we are in vertical and how can the triggers or the Paolo method um, contribute to, to a better standing, better posture, better, better use of the body and mainly better feeling in the body. So remember the last time we were working with the sphincters, well, the one before that, with the pelvic floor, the front sphincter and rear sphincter. Well, if you look at me from the side, and I'll contract the front sphincter and allow the body to respond, it is making this kind of a roundness of the body. And then I release it. <sighs> if I work well now with the rear sphincter, you see what it does? It brings the chest up, the opposite from before, contract the buttocks, push me forward here. Now I release it again. Mm. Which one will my body need more? Rear sphincter? Or front sphincter? Might be hard to answer, though when you see my tendency to have a, a hollow back, yeah, a, a strong arch in the lower back, you might say, okay, front sphincter will make it a bit less, right? So that's true. Uh, but then with the rear sphincter, oh, it takes me up in the front. That's good also. Yeah, so good idea is both of them in the right amount. You see, that's what I did now. Like, now I'm releasing. I'm not contracting the pelvic floor at all and now I'm contracting it and I make it more and more stronger and stronger and stronger and it takes me up and it wants my legs to, to come closer and it really takes me right up. So that's interesting isn't it? Just standing and then see what a contraction of both sphincters does to my posture. Right now I contract both but not too much. I didn't go all, all the way, just half the way or a little bit more than half. What I feel is these muscles are working strong and my feet are sent into the ground. So therefore my body is sent up to the sky and I become longer. That's good for the, for the back, for the disc between the vertebrae. It makes them less pressed. I'm becoming longer. So there is more, less pressure on the discs. In fact, when somebody has a lower back problem, like a disc problem, I would suggest for him to, to do this contraction just to make him longer and even to walk with it, like what I'm doing now. That's not the walk I want to teach you when we are okay. That's not a, a very good walk. But uh, some of that, a little bit of that, uh, has to, to, to take part in a good walk because that would be the opposite of this, which is collapsing, right? You don't want to be collapsing and then create even more pressure on the discs. You want to push the ground down and to therefore really grow up, to be longer. But you don't want to make it too strong to become stiff. You want to be just the right amount, hmm. the correct tension, something like this. And now, um, so we can do a contraction of front sphincter and release rear sphincter. And if you do it strong, it might take you up on your toes and release. And then find the middle. Ah, oh, I'm doing now both and release. That's great to learn something about uh, the balance between the front and the back. Um, 
I want to connect it also to a very important exercise that we learned uh, quite in the beginning of the Paolo method, this one. This one is uh, a trigger that uh, affects very strongly the breathing, right? So you already, I think we mentioned it, that this movement will affect the contraction of the front sphincter and this one the rear sphincter. We could say the opposite as well, that <laughs> front sphincter will tend to take us this direction, rear sphincter contraction will take us this direction. So this is how they harmonize with, the, with this uh, turning of the arms in and out, which is a very strong breathing exercise. Ah. <sighs> You can play with this one a little bit, especially people who do have some kind of uh, asthmatic conditions, any kind of uh, breathing problems. This will be great. Now you can always do it uh, twice, like turning in and then even more to make it stronger. And then you can go through the release phase and then turning out and even more. Ah, and release. And then in and release and out. Ah, and so on, and allow the body to respond to it and to, to, to make a play with it. To how do you want really to do it? Now, this is leading us to well, I wanted to, I was thinking about uh, uh, foot exercises, but I think these ones we'll do in the next session when we are really going to reach to towards the uh, healing walk, how we call it, the, the walk that serves us uh, in a healing way. Uh, so before that, uh, some more uh, triggers from the Paolo method, things to do with the tongue, and that is affecting very strongly the neck. So two or three things. First of all, um, if we want uh, to be long, like we did just a second ago, from the sphincters, both of them together, there is something with the tongue that will make us very long in the neck and also affect the whole structure as well. That is to make our tongue very, very long, and yet to contain it inside a closed mouth. We can start with taking it out, and, in, and we need it also to be narrow. So how do we do the neck, the, sorry, the tongue to become narrow? Yeah, if you put your finger and like you want to touch the finger, it will become narrow. Try with the tongue not to touch the mouth. Let it be in the middle. That will make it narrow and, and long. So, uh-huh. And then you start to take it inside. So you see this movement? To take it inside means that the neck goes backwards. It makes room for the tongue to be contained without becoming shorter. You need it to be as long as it was. So we take it out, long. Uh, hmm. So you see, it makes my neck long. It's again affecting my legs. They are sending the feet down into the earth. So I'm growing up. I'm walking with it. I just use it to make myself longer. And I release it. Now with the tongue, there is another exercise that is much more uh, usable because you can use it and still uh, be more free. And that is to push uh, the teeth, one tooth, each time in one side, once at the left side, but it's the upper tooth, rear one, the rear upper tooth, I push it softly with my tongue from the inside outside. This is the direction of the push. And look what it does. Mm -hmm. I release. Mm -hmm. You see it is stretching 
the chest, the inner, the mouth inside, and then to the other side, mm. affecting the ear, the jaw, the inner space of the mouth, mm. once to the right and to the left. It is affecting my toes, if you look. Mm. Mm. And of course, my head and neck. This is very good to release some tension in the neck. Sometimes some tension that is stuck here can be released with this exercise. Mm. Mm. Now, don't be surprised that it will engage the working of the sphincter muscles in a, in a way that we didn't talk about yet. Even they can work side by side, but that doesn't matter right now. It, you just will feel that it is working down there. The pelvic floor is working, but it's like, oh, one side was contracted and then the other side was contracted. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then you can go back to the long and the narrow tongue inside the mouth. Mm. Okay. So that was about becoming long. There is another beautiful exercise that really takes care of the neck to become long, a bit more complicated. It's with the lips. It's called upper lip towards the nose. So it goes like this, the lip with your fingers like this. And you hold it with the lower lip. Okay, you roll it up and you come from down with the lower one to push it and to hold it up there. Now, you, did, you, you saw that my neck was doing this, but that's because of the next part of the, of the exercise. The next part is relating to the nose. The nose has to go down because if it will go up, that will not be good to my neck. But if it goes down, while the lip, the upper lip is going up, then that's what happens. So you see, it's quite similar to a long tongue. Hmm. But it opens a lot my eyes. Hmm. The breathing. And Paula was uh, recommending doing this while doing dishes or any house uh, works. And uh, yeah. And also when standing up, coming from sitting or from the bed to standing up, because it brings a lot of air to the brain. Mm. Okay, so we had uh, a contraction, front sphincter contraction, contract and release while standing, allowing the body to respond. Contraction of the rear sphincter, Contract and release, allowing the body to respond. And contraction of both. <laughs> you see, it takes my the upper lip towards the nose. It's natural because that one does engage both of them because it makes me long. And we did the, the tongue, the, the tongue uh, from side to side. Left, right, left, right. And now a long one. You don't necessarily need to take it out first, but you can for the beginning. Otherwise, just make it narrow and long inside the mouth. Hmm. And we finish with the, uh, uh, with this one. So see, I can do it without my fingers, but it's best to start to learn it in front of the mirror and do this rolling up because what's confusing here is that the upper tongue has to be free. It has to be rolled up with no tension. If you make a tension in the lip, it makes it uh, short. It makes it uh, contract into the middle. No, you don't do this in the upper tongue, but you do contract a little bit with the lower tongue using the chin. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Now, I wanted to say something about uh, dancing. So 
I decided not to put music because I've seen in the past that when I do that, YouTube might take it out, it might uh, close down that part. So instead of putting music, I can either sing to you or just imagine the, um, the rhythm. Yeah, so there is a rhythm that I'm dancing with it. Now, what I'm doing with it is I'm just uh, bouncing up and down, Why? Right? That's what I'm doing, and I can do it side by side, one leg, then the other leg. And who is doing the bouncing? It's mainly the knee, right? The knee is bending, and, 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 and what is important is to feel the, ah, the push of the flow down. So all this bouncing is not about coming down, it's about the pushing to come up. I bend in order to push to come up. I bend and, and that's what I do in, in this bouncing. And I can do it like this, from leg to leg, kind of walking. Note that my, my feet, they are trying to be parallel. Not all the time they are totally parallel, but that's the thinking. I don't want feet like this. Why? When they are like this, this is encouraging the rear sphincter, the buttocks, and the lower back to contract. We don't want that. We want the middle to work. So we put them parallel. Okay? And it can be more jumpy. When, when it is more jumpy, what does it mean that I'm pushing the, the floor quicker, like that? And that, look what it does to my shoulders. It really releases the shoulders. See if you can do that to allow your shoulders to be freed, free by this jumping, this uh, pushing of the floor. <laughs> so if I allow also some noise, whoo, whoo, and then I come back more to more touching in the full foot. The sole of the foot is really touching, so I can bend more my knees. Yeah, things like that. Now I can do the a little bit from side to side and it releases a little bit differently in the neck shoulder junction and also can move my head and if I just allow my arms to do kind of a free movement allow the noises to come then that's a power dance it's not a, a normal dance but it's a dance that really releases the body. Think now about your lower back area. That when we are bouncing, when we are pushing the floor down, we are giving this part of the body, uh, <laughs> I will call it a kick of support. Uh, it's, it means, oh, that I'm pushing this area. Can you uh, feel that? It's not that easy might be easier if you remember the very first exercise we learned from the Traeger approach, shifting weight from one leg to the other leg. One of the purposes of this exercise is to give support to the back in one side and then in the other side. It's not the only reason it's about it was about recognizing support, remember? Because recognition of support means release, automatic release. And then when you feel that, oh, when you push the ground, it is really supporting, really like lifting my, my, my back, my low back. And then you really see how it is lifting the shoulder, right? So it's not only lifting the low back, it's lifting all the way up to the head. Yeah, if I'm jumping, the head is going up because what my feet, my legs are doing, right? That's, yeah. So just think about, oh, I'm pushing the floor and it is lifting my body. It is supporting it, lifting it like you were dancing with a baby and it will be like cradling. It will be uh, making him very comfortable because of the connection to the ground. So the connection to the ground through the feet travels all the way up through the low back, through the shoulders, shoulder junction, the neck, and even to the head. So you can really feel even the head 
is being pushed up from those feet, those legs that are pushing the ground down. Ah, and now just give a minute to feel yourself. If you did do it with me, if you did the bounce like that, ah, it's a good feeling. Everything is streaming now. And then next time you dance, hmm, remember that kind of bouncing. That it's not about contraction like this. It's not about going down. It's about just bending the knee forward to push. And it's fun, but it's about the push. I push, I push, I push, I push. And therefore, this is all getting free. I hope that you can find this in the dance and uh, enjoy all this kind of uh, uh, understanding about the uh, balancing between front sphincter, rear sphincter, where should my pelvis be, not too much here, not too much here, what is the middle which relates to contraction of both of them at the same amount of pressure. So I'll see you in the next and last uh, lesson for the 21 days and uh, that will lead us really to a therapeutic walking.